Welcome, welcome. And you are joining us in the lab in the heart of Dash Diamak. And we're doing this in the lab because we don't actually have space for this in the workshop. I'm currently leaning on the Orange Storm Giga from Elgu. And as you can see, it's pretty big. Ah, come on. It comes in two boxes. Uh, yeah, it's like over 200 kilos. Thank God for free delivery. Um, yeah, it's pretty big. Cue the Yo Mama jokes. This is by far the biggest printer I have ever assembled. Twice as big as the biggest like last time, because that was the Neptune 3 Max, also from Elegu. They like big printers. Uh, but yeah, this this took Uncle Jesse about three hours to assemble, so I'm hoping I can do at least as, as good as him. Uh, but don't let the size of this thing fool you, because it can print up to 300 millimeters per second, and it has a heated bed up to 100 degrees. And for a printer that's this big, that's not bad. I'm not sure if this printer is actually too big for me. Uh, I think when you have a very big printer, uh, the guilt that you suffer from printing something small is, is inversely proportional to the size of the object. Because if you print something small on this, you're just kind of wasting it. So yeah, this is a niche use. No one's going to print a standard size dummy 13 model on this. And I'm racking my brain as to what I should actually print with this. So I thought uh, maybe a giant Minecraft chicken, um, a dildo bat made of TPU, or a giant Jenga set. I'm still not sure yet, but if you guys have any idea what I should print later on, then let me know. So let's get to work. As I said, Uncle Jesse did this in three hours. I hope I can beat him. Um, everything else in this video is going to be unscripted. So uh, yeah, let's just see what Elegu can offer. Warts and all. <sighs> I'm not sure which one to open first. Um, this one is lighter, it's less intimidating. Ah. So much more. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I knew this was gonna be big, but I didn't anticipate how big the rods would be. Oh, f <laughs> okay. I think I might need some help with this. <laughs> Seriously, I might need some help with this. <laughs> okay. Look at the size of those Zed rods. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you see how insanely huge those rods and lead screws are? Uh, even compared to this, what is actually a large NEMA 17 motor, but it is tiny compared to one side of the frame. And it looks so underpowered, but hey, it does work apparently. <laughs> This is so nuts, look at the size of this. I actually feel a little bit intimidated by this. I might need to compensate. This is the printer your girlfriend told you not to worry about. I'm worried. <laughs> The floor is slippy, it's not my fault. This is the heavier box. I gotta stop smoking.
Okay, I think we're gonna have to take the whole thing out. This is the base and the bed. So for scale, this is my hand. It's huge. Oh, come on, Elegu. I really wanted to step on it. Oh, ruining all the fun. Well, that is definitely the longest cable chain I have ever seen. And the size of these motors. God, that is a hefty guy. So in addition, we got a pretty regular spool holder. Pretty hefty spool holder. Got the whole print head here. Gigantic screen. Got some filament and a lot of tools and screws and stuff. And we do have a set of nozzles, 0.4 to one millimeter. And of course, that will be necessary. Let's get to work. So that was pretty simple. That only took a couple of hours and it's, well, it's pretty much just screwing in screws. It would have taken a little bit shorter had I not forgotten to remove a cable tie, uh, which I then squished when I was putting the gantry on. Uh, but otherwise it was pretty straightforward. Now we can do some leveling. The leveling process for the Orange Storm Giga is a little bit different than normal printers. I guess I expected this as it has four separately heated beds and on other large printers there are often more than the standard four screws to tighten. To level you can just do an automatic leveling process as normal when everything is assembled, but you'll probably have inconsistencies. We actually had a difference of about 0.8mm which is not good for any printer. So what you do then is remove the build plates and slap on a leveling plate which has holes in it and this is where the second leveling process comes in. It will measure the platform at those screw points and you can then tighten the screws to lower or raise that part of the bed. And after that you can run another automatic leveling process and you should have a nice level bed. So we finally got everything dialed in. Leveling took a long time, but uh, everything is good now. So let's do some printing. So it has been an indeterminate number of days since our setup and we have our first print. 
Oh. So obviously we had to change the film and spool a couple of times because it had ran out. But uh, yeah, this is this is printed on a one millimeter nozzle. Uh, and where we had to change, it's, it's pretty strong layers of deer well. Uh, and this thing, despite it being in VAS mode, is very strong. Uh, but that's what you get with a one millimeter nozzle. But yeah, it kind of reminds me of the VAS we did for uh, the Ender Z, which was like almost a meter high. Uh, that wasn't as strong though, uh, but this one came out so nicely. I love it. So this was our first print. If you guys have any requests for something huge, let us know because I'm always in the mood for printing something massive. Uh, obviously this printer is not for everyone. It's pretty big. That's abundantly clear. However, you can make it quite useful for batch production because in the new year, we are getting a four print head upgrade to it, which allows you to duplicate prints at the same time. What would be even better would be a four print head tool changer. That would be amazingly cool on a printer this size. And this is a clipper printer. You can mod to your heart's content. So I expect someone will do that pretty soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Remember, if you want us to print something huge on the Orange Storm Giga, then let us know. You can also talk to us on our Discord server, where we have a specific channel for our printer build series, as well as suggestions for the shop. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The subscribe button is somewhere in here, no doubt. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Later.